Hey everybody, this is Jason Creel. In this video, I'm going to tell you my story of how I started and grew three lawn care businesses. Today's video is sponsored by my friends at Graham Spray Equipment. I hear stories all the time of people saying, hey Jason, I uh, just talked to a guy the other day. He said, I told the guys at Graham, he said, I want to get in a weed control and fertilization. I called Graham. I told him, I said, I watched Jason on YouTube and I want to get a, a Graham spray rig to start my weed control and fertilization business. So if you need a spray rig for your business, go to GrahamSE.com or give those guys a call. Some of you have been following me on YouTube for years, but I am in my third lawn care business and this is going to be kind of an unedited version of my journey through lawn care and i thought it would be helpful some of you may just be curious to know how i ended up uh, with my third lawn business was that intentional unintentional and to know my story from how i got started in lawn care and then there's others out there who might be looking to start a lawn care business there's people start lawn care businesses all the time and i thought this might be some encouragement to you to tell you the highs and lows of me starting a lawn care business and by the way i'll start off by saying i still think the lawn care is a great business to start and i am a happy member of the lawn care industry so with that being said uh, let me start i'm i'm recording this in august of 2023 so let me take you back to 2007 i believe that was when i got my start in lawn care i know many of you that watch probably been doing it a lot longer than that one thing i try to do on youtube is not appear to be any smarter than I am or, or, or dumber than I am for that instance, but just try to, to be transparent and share with you the truth. So 2007, I uh, was at a little bit of a crossroads in my life. I had, to be honest, worked a bunch of dead end jobs, just terrible jobs. And I, I had a, a college degree and, and did, did well in that, but it was not in a field that I was really interested in pursuing. And so I decided um, that I wanted to do something with my life that was that mattered in my opinion you know that something a little bit bigger than than just me working some job so I had some different thoughts I had considered joining the military uh, I considered possibly going off and being a missionary somewhere I'd, I'd done a little bit of that just in real short-term stuff and then I'd uh, also thought about starting own business and those are kind of three thoughts I was tossing around I'd talked to some military recruiter type people i had had uh, been on some short mission trips and considered that but i uh, came down and i bought this book that was called 48 days to the work you love and then i ended up buying another one called 48 days to creative income i say book it was more of a workbook it actually came in a three ring binder and it was like homework in there you had to answer the questions by a guy named dan miller well dan miller uh, inspires people and helps people to, to get jobs but also to help you start your own business so I began to want to start my own business honestly I don't know that I gave it that much thought I didn't know that I was qualified for a whole lot and came down to the conclusion that I was going to start a lawn care business now you might ask well what kind of experience did you have well I, I did spend a few summers working at a, a big um, public facility where one of our responsibilities was cutting the grass and so we we did that we cut grass then other than that i basically had just cut my own grass and no uh, real training i remember when i was starting i used to sit out, outside sat at this coffee shop one time i look out there and there's this guy out there edging with his string trimmer and i thought man i'd love to be able to, to do that i mean you know i was very good at it so um, move forward I, I've got Dan Miller's book I'm gonna start my business and I start what was called blue chip lawns no business experience and my family's not really that entrepreneurial and I had a little bit of money I had a Ford Ranger I'd been driving since I was 16 years old I, at this time I'd had it for quite a while sold the Ford Ranger and went and bought a uh, I think it was a 99 f-150 just work truck single cab i think i paid forty one hundred dollars for that thing i seemed like it had ninety seven thousand miles on it when i bought it v6 just very basic and i will say this i had some uh, close friends that uh, believed in me i guess you would say and at that time they made a, a very generous grant to me a grant not a loan and and granted me eight thousand dollars and that was huge looking back i mean because oh i was able to sell that truck i didn't have very much money at all because i had not been very 
much of a hard worker to be honest with you. I'd work hard when I had a job, then I'd get a little bit of money and quit. And I just just honestly didn't have a whole lot of direction. So uh, they gave me the eight thousand dollars, sold my truck for like two thousand something. I kinda wish I still had that truck. Um, bought the, the F one fifty because I knew I needed a little bigger truck. Went and bought a six by twelve trailer. I remember that first trailer I bought had the had the gate on the back obviously but it was one of those that had a side gate i thought that was cool at the time i thought i might need that to be able to drop the gate down straight on the curb and i thought at the time i needed um, a walk behind mower as well as a ride on mower so i went and bought a a hustler mini z 2003 hustler mini z and low hours 19 horsepower 44 inch cut that was a great mower and I bought some kind of walk behind. I, I don't even, be honest, I don't even remember what it was, but it was, uh, I didn't use it hardly at all. I bought it and shortly after that, I remember selling it. A friend of mine, it, it, that was a whole nother story in itself, but I went to sell this walk behind. I put it on eBay, which I'm not sure was that smart, but that's what I did back then, probably before Facebook Marketplace. And a friend of mine uh, went with me on the trip. We had to drive to Georgia to meet this guy who wanted to buy, and this guy had a trucker coming through that was, hauling trucks and we go to meet him and it was something like we had to meet him at 11 o'clock at night or something so i'm thankful my friends driving with me we're carrying this uh, mower on the back and, and the trucker calls and he says I'm, I'm so tired i've been driving i've got to pull over and sleep and so we're already on the road gonna meet this guy like 11 or midnight or something he's got to sleep it's so a we ended up at a truck stop, sleeping in our truck, got up, ate breakfast at five or six in the morning, he finally showed up and we got the mower, but that was a terrible story. I don't I don't do that anymore. Sell locally, just use Facebook Marketplace. Well anyway, I bought the Hustler 2003 Mini Z, 44 inch deck, 19 horsepower Kawasaki. It was a fantastic mower. That was basically my only mower at that point. And within the first year, uh, I got my friend made me some kind of clip art logo that wasn't very good, uh, but I'm thankful he, he helped me out. Uh, I, re I remember uh, my first year, I got this contract on a neighborhood entranceway that paid $1,025 per month year round. And it was a contract that I would still be thrilled to have today. It was unbelievable. It, I could do it by myself in about two to three hours probably. It wasn't that big and I had to pay for the chemicals. I had to do the flowers and stuff, but a very profitable account. And not only did I get that, uh, and I look back and just think the Lord's provision for me starting out. I mean, that was a great contract to get initially. And I'm telling you, that was more money than I made in a lot of the jobs I was making for a month. And so I got that and I was just thrilled. And then in that same neighborhood, it's these little spec homes they were building, just real cheap houses. And the builder had not sold a lot of them. So there was about, I think, 15 or 20 homes in there that had not been sold. He didn't want me to edge them or anything you just want me to mow them and you know weed eat around the, the little house which is tiny in the mailbox and then blow them off and so because i'm doing interest rate i got that too i think i was literally charging 20 bucks a piece which i know you may sound ridiculous um but you have like eight houses in a row on one street these tiny little yards and i'd get in the backyard and just go across all of them at the same time and then the front yard and go blow them off well, it was so profitable doing that interest way and then mowing these 20 houses. So that's 400 bucks doing these 20 houses. It didn't take no time. And the interest way was making more in one day than I was typically making in a week easily. And I thought, this is great. And I was basically hooked on lawn care uh, at that point. Ended up shortly at, early on there, I bought a walker bagging mower. I remember one story when I went, I had this walker bagging mower and I was just didn't know what to do. I thought I thought I needed that to do leaf cleanups. And so I get that bag and mower and I'm out putting out flyers on people's door. And I borrowed my friend's uh, truck. Uh, he had an SUV, like a Tahoe or something like that. And I pulled the trailer over there and I get this bagging job. Well, little did I know what I do now, but it was one of these deals where you wait till the leaves have all fallen. There's so many leaves. I think I charged $75 or something and I probably should have charged $700. And I'm out there for hours and hours and hours bagging leaves. And actually the walker mower, I got, there were so many leaves, leaves ended up getting on the muffler, catching the thing on fire. Now it wasn't anything crazy, but I remember my friend had some like 
hand wipes in the back of his car. I go grab them hand wipes and put the fire out. No, no damage, but it, it scared me a little bit. I thought, you know, I was more concerned about burning up my Walker mower, which I had invested in. So, got off to, to a little bit of a rough start there uh, initially, but when I got that Hustler mower, I started just using that, doing the interest way, and then I started picking up customers. And I used to do postcards on the door. I used to, uh, didn't, didn't have a web presence at that moment, but I would go around um, leaving postcards on doors in neighborhoods. I lived in a city where a military base was, and so there would be new people coming in in the summertime I was able to pick up a lot. So I started growing that first year, worked by myself. The second year, I had an opportunity, somebody was selling their lawn business, getting out of the lawn business. And he was selling four, three or four lawn mowers, I think four. And uh, maybe this is when I got the walker, I can't remember. But anyway, he, he said if I would buy two of his mowers, that he would give me um, a lot of his customers. And he had some pretty good commercial accounts. And so I, uh, I did that. I, the same person that gave me $8,000, I went back and got an $8,000 loan this time, bought two mowers, kept one and sold the other one. One of them I think was like a big old 60 inch Ferris mower. I think I sold it. Seemed like I got a walker then. I don't know if that was the same walker I was referring to or a different, I can't remember. But anyway, uh, I did pay back that $8,000 uh, thankfully, but that allowed me to land a, a several more commercial accounts and some, some good residential accounts from this guy that was getting out of the business. And so now my business in year two is taking a second leap forward. And I think at this point I might have still been working by myself, but I believe it was that year where I ended up hiring somebody i don't know who i hired first whatever but i know by year three i i was definitely uh, had employees working with me had got more business mowing grass um was definitely underpriced looking back not terribly but underpriced but i was young and had a lot of energy and was, was a very hard worker and enjoying making more money than i was used to um that was about the time that i got married and so uh, life got a little more expensive, bought my first house, I had a little workshop in the back so I'd keep my trailer and mower and trimmers, things like that. And it was about that time when a friend of mine who was in uh, real estate, he told me, he said, Jason, you need to start making videos. He said, I get about 95% of my business from the internet. And uh, so he let me borrow his camera. He told me that 10 mediocre videos was better than one good video, which might have been true at the time. I'm not sure it is anymore. But I remember borrowing my camera sitting in the backyard, and I still remember one of the first videos I filmed and put on YouTube, which was how much money can you make in the lawn care business. It was uh, about two or three minute long video, and that was my start on YouTube. Looking back, I didn't think YouTube was going to turn into a business in itself, but that's what I did. The idea was to help... Uh, help my business start showing up on the search engines. So uh, I can't remember again if I even had a website then. Maybe I did because that was why I wanted to do it. But anyway, fast forward to uh, year four, everything's growing. I've been hiring people, firing people, had a lot of employee issues. It was kind of like the struggle I would have. I'd hire somebody that, that I knew and had good character and all that, but they didn't have very much experience. Uh, with the exception of one young guy I had, he was great, hard worker and just unbelievable. But uh, other times I'd hire somebody on, on Craigslist or somewhere like that, get somebody that was good, but they didn't always show up on time and, and had some issues with that. So at some point, um, year five, I believe it was, I was a little bit frustrated with the business. I was working hard, making money, but life is more expensive. I have one or two kids at this point and a wife and a house and you know everything costing more and just getting hammered with taxes more than I was used to being self-employed. And I took a job. I had a degree, a college degree in, in computer industry, and I had a friend that was working, and I took a job working for a government office there. And um, I just, It was paid pretty well, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to keep my lawn business running. I'm going to just let my crew run it, and I'll go work this job, and I'll be able to make two incomes. So I did that, and it actually it worked for the most part. I was definitely getting paid well at the computer job, but I didn't enjoy it all. I was bored out of my mind sitting there in a cubicle. I mean, bored out of my mind. And part of the reason we, we didn't really do very much. <laughs> so that was uh, didn't fit my personality. Uh, the other thing, I had some issues not being on the crew. 
I had a crew leader, one of the guys I promoted crew leader gave him a pay raise, but uh, things were starting to slip a little bit. And some of it I didn't see because I went out there, but started to get some, some complaints. Well, along this process, while I'm working this job, I have somebody approach me about buying my business. It's five years old at this point. I've got 150 lawns, maybe, I'm not sure, some good commercial accounts. And things were going pretty well. It, it was a profitable business, but it was making some mistakes and, and needed cleaned up. Uh, this person wants to buy it. So we negotiate and uh, come up to an agreement and he purchases my business. Uh, I didn't want to get completely out of the lawn business. So we had a, a non-compete agreement for the, the vast majority of the business that he took over. He changed the name. Uh, it was looking to, to scale it and get bigger. Um, but I kept just a small little portion in a small town, and that was basically, according to my non-compete agreement, I could just basically work in that little town. Well, I sold all my equipment, truck, everything, so I, I got the money, which was great. I went and bought another truck, another mower, an enclosed trailer, I think, this time. And shortly after, we moved into a bigger house, had a third kid uh, coming along about that time. We fortunately got a good deal on the house, but it was, it was definitely more expensive, but we, Got a good deal on it, but you know, a lot of the money went to buy new equipment and I've got this little small business on the side of like mowing 20 yards or something. And it can't really grow because I'm in such a small little area. Well, along that time, I decided to start a coupon book fundraising company. I thought, what a great idea. Employees are such a pain to deal with. Why don't I just start a coupon book fundraising company where you don't have any employees? You just give the coupon books to your, these kids. They run home and sell them to their grandmother for 20 bucks. The school gets $10. I get $10. This is the greatest idea I've ever had. And got some affirmation, and I don't remember a whole lot of people disagreeing with me, but I had a guy that was going to partner with it, but he backed out, and that was smart on his part. Um, spent about a year trying to do that. And I did get in a few schools, made a little bit of money in those schools, but overall the printing cost of the books to get 10,000 books was roughly $20,000. And I spent a year doing it and essentially broke even with the coupon books, maybe. Well, if you spend a year breaking even, that means you basically went backwards a lot because cost of living is not free. So uh, we're still mowing those you know, 20 yards or so, but basically, lost a lot of the money that I had sold my business for and still to this day regret that. But that was a, a bad business decision and was not a good fit for me and um, just frustrating to see over, over a year or two later after I sold my business that I didn't have much of that left after this business failure. Well, about this time, uh, we decided we're gonna relocate. I'm moving about an hour and a half to two hours north closer to where me and my wife uh, both grew up in a particular area. We're moving to a new town. And, and so I decided to sell the remainder of my lawn business, which wasn't that much at that time. I mean, I sold, I think I sold the truck, the trailer, the mowers, and these 20 to 25 customers, whatever I had, and got a little bit for it. Not, not a whole lot, to be honest with you. But it gives me a little bit of money to, to move and get started. And as I'm moving, I decide I'm going to start Lawn business number three, Alabama Lawn Pros, which is my current lawn business. And I reached out to a friend of mine. I was actually kicking around the idea of buying into a franchise that did tax preparation at this time. I was just thinking, do I want to do lawn business again or not? And um, we actually drove to Virginia to visit this franchise and, and spent a couple of days, let them tell me all about it. And we just made the decision not to do that. And so I was talking to my friend about that. I was like, hey, uh, this is a friend I knew who was a little bit older and been in the lawn business for over 30 years running a big weed control and fertilization company. His big company, uh, he was not the owner, but they had sold out and he began working for Harold's, who is now my supplier. They sell me all the weed control and fertilization products. So my friend is now working for them. He's covering the state of Alabama, which is where I live. And by that time, uh, I decided, okay, I'm moving to this new town and I want to start a weed control and fertilization business, but I also wanted to mow too because I wanted to make money. So I moved and that first year I'm mowing grass and I am spraying yards. And my friend who had had over 30 years experience, he's now my sales rep for Harold's 
and he's my mentor. He's showing me how to spray. We got out in the parking lot and got put water in my Graham spray rig. He told me go to Graham, buy a Graham spray rig. I went and bought a 400 gallon split tank from Graham and I, I spray the yards with that particular uh, rig out in the parking lot to teach me how to spray. And everything is, is going pretty well as far as that goes. And then um, things start to grow. I, I picked up about 100 customers the first year. I mean, I moved here with three kids, had a fourth one shortly after that, and that's how many I have now is four, uh, but um, needed some business. I was working at on, on the side. I would uh, help a friend of mine I met locally. He was mowing grass. I would go weed eat with him once or twice a week. He put me on the weed eater. He's mowing yards doing that for like $15 an hour, just trying to do what I need to do to get my business up and going while I was growing. So I ended up picking up maybe 20 mowing customers and about 80 um, yards to spray. And again, I had to buy another mower. And, and uh, at this time I bought an old diesel Ford with that 7.3 liter diesel, my Graham rig on the back. And it was a great truck. I ended up fishtailing the trailer twice on either side, which was bad, put a dent in it. And uh, but things were growing. I was getting comfortable with the spraying side of it. Year two, I began to grow again. I, get, I pick up another 100 customers. Now I'm up to about 200 customers. Year three, I pick up another 100 customers. I'm up to about 300. And my website is starting to bring them in. And I started calling on people that were on Facebook. They were mowing grass saying, hey, if, if you don't have anybody you're sending your weed control customers to, please send them to me. I would either give them $50 or I'd spray their yard for free or I believe it was in year two or three where I decided I'm not going to mow grass anymore. I didn't want to grow big and have a mowing crew and a spraying crew and a landscaping crew. I said, I'm just going to focus on the spraying. And so that's what I did. I, I had a guy that was starting up a, a mowing company. I called him up. I said, hey, uh, I'll give you my mowing customers, 20, 25 mowing customers, in exchange for you to cut my grass for a year. So we agreed to that. I gave him my customers. He's still in the business today and doing well. I talked to him. From time to time, he mowed my grass that year. I sold that mower and didn't have a lawnmower for a little while. He's cutting my grass and, and I'm focused on spraying. So I'm up to about 300 customers. The next year, I start growing more. I get up to um, roughly 480 customers, I think was about the most I had. Can't remember if it was this year or the, or the fifth year. Um, but I had a friend of mine that was looking to really grow and scale his business. So I sold some of my customers to him. A problem I had at this point, I was very unorganized with my business. I was driving all over the place. I had 480 customers and had a friend uh, end up buying a second truck. I thought maybe I'm gonna scale and go to two trucks. So I had a friend that was uh, would come run my second truck for me, um, you know, two days a week or so. But he had his own business and he was growing and I was growing and he didn't have time to help me and I needed him more than two days a week. And eventually, uh, my friend, well, other friend wants to grow and so I sell about 200 customers to him or maybe 180 that time in the next year, 40 or 50 more. And I shrunk back down to like 200 something uh, customers. And I, and I sold that second truck um, and I just got where it was just me and I could handle this easily. Now, you may think, well, why'd you do that? Well, I, I wanted the money for sure. It also accomplished another thing. I was able to really tighten up my route. I was driving all over Birmingham and um, didn't particularly enjoy that. And so when I, I sold him all the kind of outside yards and I, I really tightened up my route. When I did that, I understood how much money I was leaving on the table by being so unorganized and inefficient. And as I started to get my customers, I mean, honestly, and this, I look back, it's so stupid, but I would, I would go to the same neighborhood five times sometimes to, to spray yards. I'd go and spray a few and though so-and-so hadn't paid. So I had to come back and spray his later. And so-and-so was on a different schedule. I'd spray his later. And and I, I finally, I got all that cleaned up. I said, listen, it, it's all in order. I'm coming to this neighborhood. I'm spraying everybody's yard today. I'm going to the next neighborhood, spraying everybody's yard today. And when I did that and I got it all organized and efficient, it made a huge difference in the amount of pro production I was able to do in a day. And I'm talking about now leaving the house at eight o'clock, being home at three and knocking out some big time days where I'm, I'm doing 25, 30 yards, making, you know, fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars in, in, in gross now you you've got your expenses and things like that but it it really helped things 
Uh, and that's the way I've, I've been since then. I thought, you know what, I'm not just taking some random yard out there and driving out there. And if I pick up a new customer, they're going on the schedule where they need to go and it's going to be efficient and I took back control of the business. Well, things were uh, growing great, but I, I began to be a lot less, uh, a lot more selective, I guess you would say, on which customers I take on. I only take on customers that were in the neighborhoods I was established in. I began saying no to a lot of business. And about this time, um, actually before this, the YouTube and things, uh, opportunities that came online were starting to increase for me. And that allowed me to be able to um, sell off some customers uh, like I did and downsize. I still enjoyed being out there in the field and wanted to do that, but I was also starting to make more money on the internet doing things that I do. I sell courses. I got sponsorships for my channel um, like Yardbook, Gram Spray Equipment, things like that uh, if you watch the channel. And just had some great opportunities. Did a lawn care life conference. Started having my own conference and things. So I um, was able to spend more time with my family and also start growing the online portion of my business. So that brings me to today uh, where I have 300 something yards and I do take customers. I mean, I had a call yesterday for a new customer. I've, I've been getting regular calls even during the summer. People move into town. I've got a website that ranks well on Google, so I'm constantly getting leads that way. I have a bunch of relationships with people that are out there mowing grass, and so they send me the weed control business. I send them the mowing business that I don't want. And I'm really enjoying the business probably as much as I ever have, and I still have some freedom in my schedule to be able to do YouTube and, and to grow that side of the business as well. Both sides are going well, enjoying things, and I just wanted to, to share this story with you so you know how I got to where I am today. My story wasn't always great. I look back, I have some, some serious regrets, particularly losing a bunch of the money that I uh, sold the business for and I made some investments mistakes. But now um, I basically take the money that I'm making and which is, you know, over the past few years been more than we need to live on and starting to invest that in mutual funds and, and boring things like that because I've, I've also uh, lost money doing more aggressive investments. So just taking a, a very strategic but not flashy approach anymore and just taking the money and putting it back and um, being smart with which customers I take on and growing the business and out there enjoying myself. So lawn businesses are great. Um, I think mowing is great. It's hard work. The, the weed control has is, is been great for me. And once I uh, filled up my schedule, which did take about three years, unfortunately, and like I said, I was mowing grass and doing other things to supplement my income while I got the schedule filled up. But uh, that's my story. Um, I'm Jason Creel. I appreciate you watching. If you hadn't done so, subscribe to the channel. I've been on YouTube for a long time. I've got over a thousand videos. I don't know, maybe 1,500 videos. I don't know how many videos I got. A lot. And I teach people how to start a lawn care business at lawncarelife.com. There's uh, if you want to get in weed control and fertilization with um, with warm season grasses, you can go to lawncarelife.com and check out the Weed Control and Fertilization Academy. Uh, if you want to come to my conference, it's our fourth, uh, I wouldn't say annual because we've skipped some years. I hadn't done it since January 2020, but in February 23rd and 24th of 2024, we are doing the fourth Lawn Care Life Conference. My friend Paul Jameson is helping me put this on this year. Uh, we got Naylor Taliaferro, Alan Hain. The Lawn Care Nut, Caleb and Brittany Allman, Jeremiah Jennings is coming. I'm really excited about this year's event and do think it's going to sell out and be bigger than ever. We are planning to sell 300 tickets, which is almost triple the size that it's been in the past. And again, I do think that this one will sell out. So the early bird ticket price is $197. That includes all your meals. Thanks for watching the video. We'll see you guys in the next one.